On to our second speaker, Christina. So Christina is a multi-award winning chartered engineer. So as, as I was doing my research, I just saw bare letters behind her names and I was like, bro, I don't even know if I should say it all, but it's a, it's a lot. Um, but she's absolutely smashing it and she works as a, um, she works with Instem. Uh, she works at BAE Systems. Anyone heard of BAE Systems before? Show of hands if you've heard of BAE Systems. Okay, so for those of you that haven't, so they are the biggest employer of professional engineers actually in the country, which I thought was pretty amazing. If you've heard of the Typhoon, they manufacture that. Submarines, they manufacture that. Um, and they make over 21 billion last year. I was like, man, if I can have a little bit of that, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I wouldn't mind. Um, but in her spare time, she also um, runs a small business um, called Aviate Her. Um, before joining BAE, she studied aerospace systems engineering. Um, so there's the theme of aerospace yet again at University of West of England. And like many of us here today, became the first engineer in her family. So please join me in welcoming Christina. Afternoon, everyone. Thanks, George. <laughs> it's always weird when you hear someone talking about you. <laughs> Um, so my name is Christina Pearson Rampiari. I'm a, an engineering team lead at BA Systems, and I just wanted to go through kind of my career journey with you all, and, and kind of yeah, an overview in 10 minutes. Um, so starting off with kind of education. So when I was at school, I enjoyed science and maths, um, but I mostly enjoyed solving puzzles, which kind of ties in with the engineering theme. Um, I really enjoyed the mechanical side of physics and solving problems in maths. And that was leading me to thinking I should do mechanical engineering because that was the only engineering that I knew about at the time. Um, and then I went to an air show with my family when I was about 15, 16 years old. Saw the red arrows and that, that photo is actually from that day. And uh, I knew aerospace was what I wanted to go into after hear, seeing the red arrows, hearing the roars of the, the fast jets flying over. Um, I knew that's what I wanted to do. My parents were not so happy with that decision. They wanted me to do pharmacy. <laughs> which I did not want to do. And then if I didn't want to do pharmacy, I had to be a doctor, which I also did not want to do. Um, so they didn't really understand what engineering was, but I kind of kept pushing and in the end got my own way and uh, decided to study aerospace systems engineering. Um, now, I was never really academically gifted. Um, I didn't get into the uni that I wanted to do, which was the University of Bristol, but I still got into the University of the West of England. Um, and to be honest, it was probably better for me that I did. Met my husband there, so. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> completed a master's degree in aerospace systems engineering at the University of England, University of the West of England. And then the, the issue that I had when I was young is that I didn't have a lot of confidence. So I, I kept my head down, did my degree, did what I, did what I had to do came out of uni and then it was like, right, looking for jobs. Now we just apply everywhere and everyone was like, you don't have any experience. It's like, oh, but I've got a degree. That isn't that what you want? Um, turns out kind of getting involved in societies, networking, doing placements and, you know, kind of getting an experience of, of the real world is actually something that I would recommend because that's what everyone was looking for when I came out. So I struggled initially to find a job. It took me about almost a year to find my first job in engineering, so I could have given up, but I'd, ch I'd chosen to do engineering and I had to show my parents that I had done the right thing, so I kept going. Uh, eventually got my first job as a technical design engineer on civil aircraft, so it was working on the, the nice kind of business and first class suites that I don't usually get to sit in or see. Um, and that was a really cool job, a lot of CAD work, a lot of responsibility, getting to travel, go to America, Germany, France, to show off these nice seats um, to the customers, who, was, who were people like Etihad, um, Emirates, um, American Airlines, Cathay Pacific, so big, big airlines. Um, and then I decided I wanted to, so that was in Oxfordshire, and I wanted to move back up north because I'm from Liverpool, and I missed the north. So I applied at BA Systems, who are Preston-based as well as northeast-based. Um, Got my first job on the Hawk, which is the aircraft that the Red Arrows use. So it was kind of full circle moment for me. 
um, as a flight systems engineer, went on to work on Typhoon for three years, and then got the most amazing job working on the next generation fast jet program, Tempest. And that was really cool because it involved looking at technologies that could go on to the next fast jet. So to be a part of that for an aircraft that isn't in existence yet, but will be in the future, was a really cool thing to be part of. Um, went on maternity leave and then came back after a year and then decided to, after having a child, became, started thinking about, you know, I, I don't really do much. I, I, I kept myself to myself. I've not really done anything out of my comfort zone. I don't speak to people about what I do. Maybe I should start doing that and speaking to younger people to encourage them into engineering, especially young women. Um, so yeah, became a STEM ambassador, pushed for my chartership, became chartered in 2020, and also started my own small business, Aviate Her. So I don't know if this is something that you've come across, but um, whenever I used to tell people I was an engineer, they'd say, you don't look like one. To which I was like, what, what does an engineer look like? Obviously, no one, no one could give me an answer. Um, so this inspired me to start a pin badge business, saying this is what an engineer looks like. Uh, I then got a lot of requests. Can you do one for a scientist? Can you do one for a physicist, mathematician? Um, so it kind of took off to become something that I didn't ever imagine it would be. It's been going for three years now. And um, part of the proceeds go to various charities and have raised over 4,500 pounds, which is <laughs> inspired. <laughs> And uh, my favorite part is probably the messages I get from people, from people um, like a woman who wore one to a conference where last time she went, she was told she didn't look like an engineer. Um, and a woman who messaged me to say that um, a child had asked her about a job because he saw a badge that she was wearing on a train. And so got talking about what she does. So things like that are really nice to hear. Um, so yeah, I worked as a flight systems engineer for about nine years. And then recently in January, um, got offered the opportunity to move to the next level and become an engineering team lead, leading, I think it's about eight people now, going from no one to eight, <laughs> quite big. <laughs> um, and this is a big change for me because it was going from aircraft to a Nexa Marine program. So it's our Nexa Marine program. Um, I'm leading a team of engineers on one of the systems, developing that, which I thought would be quite difficult, but actually there's a lot of transferable skills in engineering. So it's using the skills that I've already got, building on those and learning about a new product. So it's been really interesting to be part of. So I just wanted to show this because I mentioned that I didn't have a lot of confidence. Um, I was quite shy, I used to hide behind my mum. Wouldn't imagine ever doing something like this. <laughs> um, and it was really after maternity leave that my career really took off because I started putting myself out there. And from doing small things, it led to bigger things and growing my comfort zone, leading to winning awards and becoming a Department of Transport Aviation Ambassador this year and becoming an engineering team lead. So it really opened my mind to, you know, when people say, what do you want to do? It was always like, aerospace and engineer, work on aircraft. But actually, there's a whole world of engineering out there. There's lots of possibilities. You don't have to just work on aircraft and stay on aircraft. You can work, move on different things, move careers, motorsports, aviation. It's all open to you through engineering. So my tips, um, just leave you with a few. So network, you're all here today. That's a start. Um, networking has led to so many great opportunities for me from being in a book, being here today. Um, and a new job, which I actually got through speaking with different people in the company, who then put me in touch with someone who was looking for someone to fill a role. So there's opportunities just by speaking to people, which kind of leads on to the next point, which Mo also touched on, is about speaking to people working in the careers that you're interested in, about their journey, because there are different routes into careers that you may not know about. Um, I did a degree, but no one ever spoke to me about apprenticeships, schemes, um, things that I could do. Um, the next one, personal development plan, something that's really helped me um, when I wanted to show my manager kind of my aspirations and where I wanted to go. That was something that I put together and really showed them what I could do. And be yourself, kind of the theme for today, something that Mo mentioned as well. 
don't be afraid to ask questions, stay curious, and be yourself. Thank you.